Hello and welcome. This is Vinny from Arc Tropics. Today I am going to talk about how to make a mini map for your 3D game. I'm just going to show you a very basic technique that I used. You can expand on it. You can use a technique. You can use it on a 3D game, the same, same method. You can try different things with the basic idea that I'm going to showcase in this tutorial. So in my scene, I have a level which has these four walls and then it has these two different walls inside the level. And then I have a character that moves around and a camera camera has a script that makes sure the camera is following around there. So my level is set. The character can move in all directions. It can run, it can walk, it can go behind the walls and it will be visible. I will do a separate tutorial on how to do this isometric wall transparency, but that's for another tutorial. This tutorial, I want to have a mini map because I want to know where my character is in the map. For this example, I have a very simple level, so you don't really need a map to know. But when normally the game would have a complex map or, you know, you really need to see where the different elements are in the level. Like, for example, where the enemies are, there could be security cameras or there could be some, uh, some doors or hidden gems or collectibles that you want to show on a mini map. Or you want, you want the player to just get an overall idea of where everything is on the level. I wanted to have a mini map and that's what we're going to talk about in this level. So let's begin. The first thing is I want a place to show the mini map. So to do that, what we're going to do is you're going to use a sub viewport container. I'm going to use a sub viewport container and a sub viewport container is very much like a 2D uh, UI element. So it has a layout and in the layout, I will use top left and I want it to be, say, any size, because the size of this uh, sub viewport container is dependent on the child sub viewport. I just want it to be 50 pixels away from the top and 50 pixels away from the left. So this is where it's going to be. This sub viewport container it gives a warning. It needs a sub viewport as a child. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a sub viewport. There is a size value of this. I'm for now going to make it, let it be like this, doesn't matter. And let's play. So you can see that 50 pixels away from left and top, there's a sub viewport container. And that sub viewport container has a sub viewport that is of 512 pixels. So if I make it full screen, you see that the sub viewport is still 512 pixels. This is where I'm going to render my mini map. I'm just going to make it a little smaller. Let's, let's say make it 360 by 240. Later, I'm going to change the size dynamically in the script because I want the size of the map to be relative to the screen size. Inside the sub viewport, if I'm going to add another camera 3D, I'm going to rename it uh, mini map cam minimap cam and this camera is going to be on the top it's going to be 90 degrees down so now there's a sub viewport container there's a sub viewport and there's a minimap so now you can see in sub viewport container here if this is the screen this is what it's going to show let's play and see So yes, actually it works. And this is how you do your mini map. That's pretty much it for the mini map. But depending on what your need is for your game, you could have a complete map showing at one time. Or you could have some bits of wide angle view or top level view of the map. So I'm just going to talk about a few more things. One thing is that this is how you render any other camera in a sub viewport on the side or top or however you want to do it. But if you have a very complex scene which has very expensive lighting and, and textures or you know, a lot of processing needs to happen to run that scene, in that situation, having a main camera that is the game and then also having a mini map render everything all of the lighting and shadows and everything render again over there from a different angle could be very processor heavy so it could slow down your game and frame rate in this case my game is very simple 
My game has nothing, it has just basic shadow and I'm running it on a PC. Uh, if I were running on a mobile, maybe it would be slower, but as of now, I don't have much in my level. There's nothing much happening, so rendering it two times, it's okay. But in situations where I don't want to render, but I still want to give my user an idea of what or where the player is and what all is there, I would use another method. For this, I would just go ahead and add another node 3D and call it the mini map. Now, inside this mini map, I am going to replicate elements of my map. So I have four walls and then five and six walls. So let's say I'm going to make a mesh instance 3D. I'm going to create a new plane mesh and I'm going to make it the same size as, say, this wall. This wall you can see is one meters uh, and 10 meters wide and two meters high. I don't really need to have any consideration for the height because it's a, it's a plane. So I'm going to go to this mesh instance, call it wall 01 and uh, make it 10 meter by one meter. And here we have it. And let's see in the top, I'm going to place it just on the top of the wall. It is here. I already have a material for this. I'm going to use that. It's called minimap wall. So if you look at this material, it's a very simple material. The shading type is unshaded and the color is whatever you want. It's a dark um, brown color that I have chosen, but you can choose anything, it doesn't matter. Make sure it's unshaded because it, there's not going to be any lighting for this camera. Also, what we want to do is this for this minimap camera, uh, I'm going to make this camera orthogonal instead of perspective. I'm going to make it orthogonal and I'm going to make it a little wider by increasing the number, the size, 12 meter. I'm going to make it orthogonal and I am also going to add a separate environment, a new environment and I'm going to say background, custom color and I'm going to make it like really dark color. And let's see what it shows. So you can see that the background in my camera over here, the environment has completely changed. So that's, this is really, really dark. If you go to this color mask, it is rendering all these layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off all the layers, except for the last one, the layer 20. I want the minimap camera to only render items that are there in layer 20. And I'm going to make sure that my map elements, minimap elements like this wall, they are on layer 20. So when I do that, you will notice that if I play, you will notice that now the minimap is rendering the background and the wall. I'm going to change my minimap camera environment and make it a little lighter. You can see in the sub viewport now only things on layer 20 are being rendered by this camera. Let's go ahead and add more. One more thing I need to do, like if I play now, you will notice that my main camera is following the player, but the minimap is not doing that. So I'm going to go here, minimap, and I'm going to add a script, call it minimap cam. First thing I'm going to do is on ready, I'm going to create a variable called player. And this will be the node of the player. So I can easily go and click player character node and drag it to the, the path automatically 
comes up in Godot 4. So you say on ready variable player, the player character node. So now in the process function, I can say position of this position of this camera is equal to vector three. So I want the X position I want the X position, position dot Y, and the position dot C. So I want the, the Y position to be the same as the camera's position. But I want the X and Z positions to be the X and Z positions of the player. Player dot position dot Z, the Z value, the X value is player dot position dot X, but the y value is the position dot y, its own position y value. So when I do this and I play, you will notice that the minimap camera also starts moving with the player. Now we have all the walls, but we cannot see the player. That is also very simple. What I'm going to do is inside the player, I'm going to add another mesh instance and let's call it another plane. I'm gonna just bring it on the top a little so that I can see. And from the top view, I'm going to open this, use a new material. So again, uh, shading has to be unshaded and albedo, I'm gonna make uh, something green. I think it's too big. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller. 0.7, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and let's, let's name it uh, Minimap Indicator, and most important thing, make sure it's not on layer 1, it's on layer 20, because we want this green indicator to be visible only uh, in layer 20. Um, we can also, I can also put it back on the, the Y band, I can put it zero. Wherever the, the player is going to be, it is going to be uh, rendered in the same position. So now if you see, yeah, you can see the players, you can see the player wherever the player is going, the green dot is going. So now you know where the player is. You can make it a little more complex by making sure that the whole transform of the plane is matched up with the player. So whenever it moves or rotates, the if you want to show the direction of where the player is facing, what direction it's facing, you can do that. I let that go for now because that's not in the scope of this, this tutorial. So now you can see that we have a map and wherever the player goes, you can see your indicator. You can use a similar concept for your enemies or for your collectibles or items that you want to put in the, on the level, the doors. So you can use the same, same technique to, to render everything in the minimap so that the players can easily find those things or, or see those things. You can, you can color them red, a different color so that the player knows that, okay, this is an enemy. I will do a separate video on how to make this level where isometric level where the player goes behind the walls and the walls become transparent. Before I forget, your main camera should render everything except for layer 20. Because if this layer 20 is on, you can see that these items will start showing up in the main game. And you will notice that only when I go here, see, when the walls become transparent, you can see those planes. We don't want that. So the main camera should not render layer 20. In that situation, if you turn it off, you will see that there is, you are sure that nothing is getting rendered from the minimap. So this is how you do uh, minimaps. Now, one more thing before I finish the tutorial. As you might have noticed that when I play the game, if the screen is small or whether it is big, it does not really matter. The size of the minimap remains the same. And I don't want that. I don't. I want my minimap to be a certain 
ratio but it's like it should be proportional to the size of the screen so for that i'm gonna go to the minimap camera and i am going to make the viewport of this camera get viewport dot size i'm going to get the viewport and change its size to i'm going to get i'll get the viewport of the main camera and i'll get the size of it and then i will divide it by five because i want that my map should be one fifth of the size of the screen uh, and if i play you can see that right now the map is one fifth of the, of the viewport size and then again when i increase it it's uh, again the map size has increased to become one fifth of the viewport size i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you are interested in good old game engine or other general game development tutorials please like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you for watching